everybody, would you like to see how to take a piece of paper and turn it into a fun junk journal pocket with using only one cut in the paper? Uh, so here's prototype number one, a very easy little uh, pocket to make. Here is the pocket, a simple decoration, and I'll show you how to do that. And that is fun. You can put little, tuck little items in here once you are done and you can put those in your junk journal. Okay, very easy to function. And then we have number two. This is a, a, using a bigger page. This is using an index page from the back of a bigger book. And this yields you a nice big pocket to put uh, fun things into uh, for your junk journals. Yeah, let's see if I can find anything. Okay, maybe you have a piece of ledger or something like that that you want to tuck in there. You could totally do that for display purposes. Very fun. I did a little decorating. Here, let me show you. Um, I cut a piece apart, a piece out of another book and uh, glued it on the front, did some different decorating and I'll show you how I did that. It's very easy. Okay, backing up so you can see the whole thing. Okay, and then number three, uh, this is a little bit bigger of a pocket and it has more display area. So what I did was I took this letter from 1912. It's a beautiful Greek handwritten letter and I wanted to display it more prominently. And this way, with this pocket design, you can see more of the actual item. And then I decided to layer up an envelope, a Greek envelope in there as well. And then this one has a fancy little pocket in the front where you can tuck little extra goodies, little tickets, maybe some postage stamps, things like that. So uh, pretty much the same concept, but just a lot of fun. And uh, just one cut for all of them. So let's take a look at how we, uh, these are made. Super easy. Uh, okay, so here is prototype number one, and this is just using a regular book page. I grabbed a book page from this old book called Heartthrobs. We were working in this book before, and I had some, uh, I would use the cover, so I want to put these pages to good use. So what I did was I came along with my craft knife and I just lightly uh, ran my craft knife down here and that releases um, a page very easily. So that's one way to do it if you only want to remove one or two or three pages from a book as opposed to pulling out the big cutter. And uh, you can flush cut that if you like, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it as is. And so what you want to do is fold your page and bring these two edges together. Don't hard crease this bow. Uh, where the spine is um, if you don't want a line there. It's okay if you do, but um, if you don't want the line, don't hard crease it there. Just bring these edges together. And then looking at the top from here to here, go for about the middle and then go for about maybe one third of the way down your page. You can go a little farther, you can go a little uh, closer. It's all, uh, it's going to give you different pocket looks, but we'll just see where this one takes us. Okay, so now we have this. Okay, and now what we're going to do, so we're going to take this and maybe fold it in about half an inch. Okay, and the more you fold it in, the narrower your pocket will be. Okay, so and that's totally up to you. You can make it as uh, wide or as narrow as you want. There's really no right or wrong here. But I'm saying I'm going to go, maybe that's an inch, I'd say. And I'm looking to see what's in here because that's what I want to show the prettiness of the writing. Okay. And uh, now you're going to fold up from, that was your one cut. And here's how we just make the pocket. We bring this up and I'm going to do this about, I don't know, what is that? About a third of the way up and glue it. Cause that's going to bring me to the, the points here and here. And let me ink those points so you can see them a little better. This is vintage photo. And this is a good time to ink your design as well before you glue it all together. If you want to do inking, and inking will make it look a little bit more, more grungy, more Victorian, more weathered, more primitive, more antique, that type of thing. And you can just go along and that part won't show, that part won't show, that part won't show. So you only need to ink the things that will actually show. And if I fold this up, okay, what is going to show? This is going to show. So I'm going to ink that. This is going to show. I'm going to ink that. That's going to show. And I'm going to glue it down to a page so I don't need to ink the back on this one. Okay. Now, to glue it together, all you need to do is glue this and this and then fold it up. There. There. And then fold it up. Now, you might be saying to yourself, but Pam, the writing's upside down on the bottom. Yes, yes it is, but that's okay because you know why? 
we have more book pages to play with and we can do the old um, cover up trickaroo. So that's what I did uh, here. I wanted this writing to be right side up and then I would also have liked this to be right side up but it wasn't so I just cut out a cute little poem from that same book and I just glued it on here. So let's just go ahead and do that. It's pretty easy. Alrighty. There's just a page from that book and it's got some things here. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and do to do, do. Where's my ruler? Just need a chunk of this. And let me just sort of pseudo cut it out. I might, you can cut it out exactly the right size or you can wing it. And I'm going to perform the wing it maneuver at the moment and see where we get. All right. Maybe I'll go for that much of it. All right, let's see where we're at now. Now that I have two sides cut, I can come in here and see exactly how, where I need it. And it's, I don't mind if a little bit of the background shows. I think that's pretty. Uh, but I want to put the words heartthrobs in the center. And then maybe glue it down and then I can, uh, I could trim it on the sides. That might be the easiest thing, but I don't want to cut my, um, the sides of my little pocket here. So I'm going to fold it in to see where to uh, remove. Yeah, that's, I'm going to perform book page surgery here. I'm just, just a hair inside the shape. And then if I fold this back on itself, it's probably just going to tear right along that line. See that? Yeah, there we go. No fuss, no muss. It's all good. Crossing fingers. Yep, everything's all good. Okay, so we can go ahead and glue that on there. And if you want to, you can ink this up as well to give it a little bit of uh, popishness. It's going to pop a bit against your background with the inking around it. Anytime you ink around something, it's going to have it. If it's a contrasting color to your background, it's going to help it pop out from the background. Okay, if you want it to blend in the background, use a similar color. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so I'm just gonna, you could use glue stick, you could use white glue here. I'm gonna use Fabrifix because it's just, uh, it's a clear silicone glue, fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper, and it, uh, it adheres quickly and doesn't wrinkle my papers as much because it's uh, silicone and not like a wet white glue. Okay, there we go. So now we have the basic construct. All right, very easy, right? So let's now, I'm gonna zoom you in a little bit because we're gonna decorate this guy. Maybe that's a little close, come back a little bit. Okay. Um, very simply and I'm just gonna do exactly what I did over here. I just grabbed a gelato which is like an I call it an adult crayon. Some people are uncomfortable with that but I think it's okay. Um, all right so now I'm just going to find some places where I might want to put some simple flowers and I'm taking no skill. All I'm doing is putting it down and giving it a little turn. Putting it down giving a little turn and putting it down and giving a little turn and I'm making the oddness of those um, little shapes become my petals. And maybe I want to do one that's hanging off the side. The whole hanging off the side thing is a great big thing in art. Yes, it's very meaningful. If you can get something to hang off the side of a page, you have escalated yourself to much higher artistry levels. Yeah, go for it. Just do it and see what happens. You'll be amazed. Um, and I did one up here, so maybe we'll do this. Let's see, I don't want. You can, you, can, you can do more. It doesn't have to be one, two, three, four. It can be whatever. It can be a blob and it's still going to look good. I don't know why. It just does. And uh, then I grabbed, because I didn't know what else to grab, I had this Distress Crayon. What color was that, you want to know? I heard you. I heard you. This is... Can anybody read that? Where are my glasses? Metallic Grape. That's what it is. Okay. And then I grabbed a Distress Crayon, because I never use these, and I think I should, because I bought it. Yeah. Okay. Scattered Straw. Um, kind of a weird looking thing, but I thought it might be nice to, I thought it was also kind of yellow and creamy and if I could get in there and make some yellowish center to the flower, this one not working so good because I got so much color there, but let's try this one, maybe a little better. Okay, that's good. And just a little, a little something in the center. Not quite sure what that was, but it's present now. And then I took, looking for it, looking for it, there it is, my Aquarelle Stabilo water soluble 8046 pencil and I just took this and I ran around the edges very loosely uh, with a light touch um, and I think I actually gave them like petal shapes so I, I did that I, I gave it petal shapes okay same thing here petal shapes petal shapes petal shapes um, not super hard, just, uh, you're not trying to indent the paper, you're just trying to give it a little shape. Okay, and I think I even came and tried to make some obvious 
you know, stamens and pistils in the center, just giving that a little bit of a look. And then I came along with my very handy tool in the art world, a Q-tip. And I squirted. Right, let me let me do this part first. Where's that green pencil? Where's the? Oh, here it is. Um, I felt like my paper, my uh, my little flowers needed some stems, so I just took some colored a colored pencil in green, nothing fancy, um, and I just drew some uh, stemmage, and with a little bit of a bell cone flare closer to the flower. That one was kind of off. Maybe make it a little wider. Um, and uh, that way. It, you've you've just enhanced it by a, a major level. Now you're up to like level three or something. You're, you're just rocking at this point. In there, and then just do your little bell cone thing that attaches there, and then you are you are amazing. And then if you want to take it up one more level and you want to um, grunge up those flowers a little bit, take some water and squirt it into your hand cup and take your Q-tip. Okay, I'll use the end I haven't used yet and just soak up that water, get it all nice and soaky. You can use your finger for this too, but I think because I want a, a specific little point in here, I'm just going to use this and make nice and soaky is good. And just lightly go around and let the, um, let the uh, graphite pencil dissolve, because that's what it's designed to do, dissolve. And then just follow your flower shapes. Can you see? Following your flower shapes. And you can even kind of dot, dot, dot in the center. If you want to get that stuff in the center to bloom a little bit, you can do that. And then you have that on your hand, you wipe that on your clothes. And um, there you go. And then you have that. And voila, let's take a closer look. It's starting to spread. If you want um, even more, you can spread. You can add a little bit more water, but I kind of like that. So that is one and done. All right, let's go to number two. Yeah, okay, let's go to number two. And number two is... Let me back up a little bit, because this is a bigger one. Uh, there, okay. This is an index page from a larger book. This is an old um, boo -boo -boo, um, a Montgomery Ward uh, catalog. It's a reproduction, and I believe I have some links for those in my Amazon shop if you look under the book section, if you're looking for them. But you can find them anywhere. Go look on the old books um, um, you know, the online book sales or go into your used bookstore and find some old books. You'll find lots of books that have index pages in the back. And they're, they're really cool to use for uh, junk journals. Now, this one had a little index and some um, advertising. So I think that's fine. Whatever, whatever you come across, it's all good. Uh, so this one, same concept. A little smaller. Let's see. Okay. So fold it. Uh, bring the two edges together without folding, actually. And let's try the same thing. Let's go about the halfway point to approximately a third or halfway down is fine. And you just cut this off. You can use scissors here as well. All right. So now we have that. Okay. And again, how much you fold it in is going to dictate how wide your pocket is. So I'd say um, I'm going to go just before the little flapper. Maybe give it a... An, like an inch length here. Oh, can't see. I'm just going to go just before the little flapper an inch length on that fold there. So it was like this and folding it like that. Okay. And I'm going to try for the same approximate place. I'm not, I'm not measuring. I'm just eyeballing. Looking pretty darn good. And that's going to give the top. Okay. See how it uh, is like a little bit angled at the top there, right there. That's what I've got here. This one came out a little bigger. They do that because it, it's because I don't measure. Um, but the, you're going to get different ones. If you want to have them come out exactly the same, always cut them at the same place. You could actually cut a bunch of papers at the same place if you want them to look exactly the same. I like to make them one by one in this case, just because it's kind of fun. And we're going to fold this up here. Now, what I decided to do with this one was make a little design across here. And what did I use? Where was it? I'll just grab a different one. Okay, we'll grab this one. Okay, so there is, um, this is one of my prehistoric Martha Stewart, I think maybe Martha Stewart, not sure, um, cutters that I bought. Some work great and some don't work so good because I bought used ones. I don't recommend buying used paper cutters because sometimes they don't work. So, but anyway, I'm trying to use things that I have and I'm just going to go ahead. You're supposed to like match the holes up with what you see there to get the pattern to continue. 
It's a little tricky, but it can be done if all is quiet and, and, and the house is quiet and the phone isn't ringing and nobody's bothering you. It will work. Why do I have a lawn guy going by today? Sorry. Um, yeah, I guess it's Wednesday. That's right. Okay. Uh, well, it's Wednesday here right now. Okay. So I have a pretty little edge. And then to emphasize that edge, I think I used a blue in this case. I'm um, going to find my little blue dauber. Got my blue dauber. And now looking for my blue ink. Tumbled glass. Okay. I'm just going to come along here. Is that close enough? I don't feel like I want to go closer. Okay. Um, just rubbing off the edge there. Okay. I want to show you this technique that I did. It's not really anything fancy, but that's what it looks like. So that's what I did there. My kingdom for a tissue or a uh, something to clean up here. Um, and then I took the brown. Always love a good brown, right? The vintage photo and my mighty little dauber with the foam end, in case you were wondering. And I did this to get this. Instead of streaking across, I lightly did this. I went back and forth, almost like an EKG machine or something like that to get more of a, a shaky sort of look. Okay, that one came out a little different, but you know, they, they are, uh, that's what happens. More hazy, more not as distinct. Okay. As opposed to a straight streak. You can do something like that just for fun. I know, I know. What does it mean? Nothing to anybody. Um, the, um, and I'm going to go ahead and, what did I do? I did ink around in brown, so I'm going to do that whilst I'm here and before I glue. And only the edges that are going to show. So in here. And I guess you could call this a modified envelope in some way, shape, or form. Um, you can call it, you can call it Martin. <laughs> call it whatever you want to call it that's okay um, but these are fun to make they're very easy and they you can blast through a bunch of your extra book pages and make a pile of these and I'll tell you having um, ready to go pockets to put in your junk journals really really helps um, when it comes time to decorate pages because you're just gonna have these ready to go ready to stuff and you can do things <clears throat> you can move along relatively quickly and okay so what I did was <clears throat> I accepted the fact that my writing was upside down, but I still wanted something for somebody to look at right side up. So I took a poem again from that uh, Heartthrobs book and I tore it out and I glued it on sideways. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here was one I was practicing on. <clears throat> so let's just tear this out. Okay, tearing. How much of this do I want? I would say at least two stanzas of this lovely little poem. It's called Landing of the Pilgrim Fathers. There we go. Okay. Gingerly tearing. You can cut. I like, I love the, the torn edge look. So I'm rolling with the tear and tearing is very easy for me and it's fun. Yeah. It's got a, a huge fun factor. So I edged it in brown and pink and pink. Where am I talking about? What am I talking about? Brown and black. So I came around initially with a little bit of brown and I thought it might get lost a little bit because it needed a little more pop than that. So I did a double ink and I came in with the black. And you know my favorite black soot. Is there another black? There's probably charcoals and grays. Um, but I think, I don't know. Are there, there, yeah, I mean, out of the distress inks. Are there other blacks? Maybe. I'm out of the distress ink loop for a while. I haven't done much. I mean, because I, I just have so many that I've collected over the years. I need not buy more. I, I, sh I need to use what I have. Okay, there we go. And uh, nice. Okay, so we have that. And we are ready to glue everything down. Let's go ahead and do this. Same idea. Coming in here. Opening this flap up. Doing this. Doing this and doing that. Now at this point, I said to myself, can I truly appreciate the um, impact that that has with that little cut? So what I did was I inserted a little piece of black paper behind it and that I, I thought helped pop these little snowflakes. Um, and that's totally choice. You can do it or not do it. And I'll show you how I did it. So before you glue this together, just open it up. That's probably what I did. And um, I had a little black piece of paper around here. Where are you? Where? Okay, let me find it. Hold on. Okay, 
I have the little black piece of paper. It's just a little black piece of cardstock. It's what I have. You could use any piece of paper, any other color that will create contrast. Okay, so I cut about maybe an inch just so I was sure I had enough. All right. And, oh, you're gluing again. Look at you, you super gluish glueness of you trying to glue together again. Not yet. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to put that in there. Glue it on. So I'm going to open this up. Now, um, whoop, what to pop. Okay, so we're going to glue on here a little across the top so it catches. Glue to here. And then we're going we're gonna to glue that on there. Put it right where you want it. If you want a little bit of the laces to pop up out of the top, that's okay. All right, but now we have some contrast, you can see. And then you can just come along and trim this off. Okay. And then you go back to what we were originally doing. Just go ahead and um, put some glue strips up here. Glue strip, what's that? That's a bead of glue with the Sugar Bells icing piping bottle with a nice fine tip metal edge so you only get a little bit of glue out and you don't waste your glue. And then basically, sometimes this big bottle of Fabric Fix just oozes out too much glue at once and this will contain the beast. All right, so we have that. We're going to put that there. All right, I'm going to show you what we're doing. Okay, and uh, going around the mountain here. Do, 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 do. And... Plop her down. I like the word bugs hanging out. Can I get that to show? No, it's not going to work. Okay, that's all right. I'm going to put that there and I have that. And I did purposely put it on an angle a little bit because I want to put a little cute button or something. I don't know, maybe maybe something like that, a little button in the corner or here. Maybe that's a good spot. Um, all right, let's do that because I think I did put a button. Yeah, I did. I put a button on the other one. Just showing you different locales. This is an old little Victorian or vintage button with a little string hanging up. Here's where that button landed. And sometimes buttons land in different places. I like the way that ink did sort of an EKG, ECG sort of look, like a either a brainwave, you know, kind of look, or um, uh, yeah, EEG, sorry. Um, this it kind of looks more soft sand. That's okay, because that's, that's the way things go sometimes. And um, now this one I did, what I did was I took the little punch outs here and I colored them and I glued them up top. Now this one, Instead of having cute little punch outs, I have like this. So I'm not going to meticulously pick up all these pieces, color them and glue them at the top. But you could, you could do anything to come across the top to decorate that um, if you did. Like for example, I'm gonna use what I have on my desk, which is always a good idea. And because it helps you clean up things more quickly. Uh, I have a little tiny piece of lace just sitting here looking very innocent. Maybe I'm gonna put you up there and maybe I'm gonna put a little lace bit on you and and just there that's what i'm gonna do something like that um something very simple and let's just put, give you a little glue up there put number one down we can put it on angle we can have a little bit of an overhang just for visual interest and a little dollop there for the second piece and you're just going to go down there because you were sitting on the desk looking for a purpose and now you have one and if you want even more, you could put a little button there. But remember, every time you put something on there, it's going to get a little thicker. So just take that into account. But if you want to do that, you can totally do that. I think I'm going to do it. I don't know. I'm just doing it. Here it goes. She's gluing the button. Not putting a string on or anything. You can. You can put a string on. I'm not going to even put it in the middle. I'm going to, I'm going to put it off to the side a little bit. Yeah, more visual interest. And there we go. That's number two. So that one was pretty easy. Let's move along to number three. Okay, that's number two, and here is prototype number three. It's the bigger one, and I just wanted to show you an, another example of something um, you can make with the DigiKit pages. So let's take uh, the DigiKit pages, the signature pages. These are softer, all-over background design uh, DigiKit pages. I call them signature pages, and um, these are just different things that you can make with them. So this one has this on one side. I print them on both sides so that when I fold them and put them in my journal, there's a like a background decoration on both sides already, ready to go. No, you don't need to decorate any more than that. But if you want to use these for a completely different purpose, same concept. Um, let's, okay, 
just a little bit. Okay, there we go. Um, that's pretty much put that on the outside. Mm. Yeah, let's do that. Now let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. Okay, I don't know, big decisions in life, right? Okay, I'll bring the two edges together. Locate ruler that's hiding. The desk gremlins have done that. That's not my fault. About halfway here. And then not past halfway, somewhere around the third to halfway is good. Cut one cut. And then you have this. Okay, so now we're going to fold in. Yeah, that looks nice. And fold in. Oh, I probably went an inch and a half, I would say, but this is a bigger pocket and you might want to measure it to make sure it does fit in your junk journal. That's going to be just about five. I think I'm going to take it in just a hair more. Um, five will work in most of my junk journals, but um, I just like a little bit of border around the pocket from the page behind it just to show. So there I'm taking it in a little bit. And now, whoop, see that? Um, so this is what it looks like. I will ink it so you can get a better visual. Is that the brown? Yeah, I think I put the wrong cap. That's a black. This is the brown. What brown is it? It's vin It's vic this one. Vintage photo. Yeah. Okay. Um, and now if your computer printer gives you the border, um, this kind of helps with that. You can just go ahead and, and ink up that entire little border area and it just disappears into the background, into the, the great abyss of uh, ink inkageness. <laughs> um, and fold. anything that shows. So I'm opening it up. Anything that shows, looking, asset, reassessing what shows, what shows. These are going to show. So I'm going to open those up and I'm just going to quickly anchor that and then quickly ink this. So we have that, we have that. Very nice already. It's looking very, very pretty. Um, I'm going to do the sides because they're going to show. And you can try different movements with your ink dauber to get different looks. So I'm doing the back and forth maneuver now. Very popular in Japan. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have that one and then we're going to fold up. Now, this one requires just a little fold up, not a big fold up. So let me show you the done prototype. It's a little fold up and that's where we made an extra secret pocket. So we have a big opening here because so you can see something fully and then a little pocket at the bottom. So I'm just going to fold it up a little bit, a little bit. Okay, just enough to make a pocket. And you can, go, you can go higher, you can go higher, but I want to show and display whatever it is that I'm, I'm wanting to show and display. So, and... Um, so since I'm going to do that, I'm going to come along and I'm going to, maybe I'm going to do the roundy roo. Here we go. Roundy roo, very popular in Polynesia. Um, yes, done for centuries. Maybe a little on the edges there, a little on the edges. And then probably along the bottom just to give it that completedness. And okay, so we have that. Now, um, what we're going to do is just take these sides and glue them down. So just here and just here. Okay. And then don't glue the rest because you want an open pocket. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Now, technically you have, yeah, it, it, it's fine. If you want to, if you want to glue this here, so that is your pocket, that's fine. If you, if you want this whole thing to give more structure and you want this to be one piece, just glue this together and maybe I'll do that. Okay. So that my pocket is a little bit thicker, which is helpful. If you find you have the peekaroos, I call this the, pe the little white pieces or something that stick out, just you get in there with your inker and you just ink them up again and that's going to be just fine. Because sometimes when you fold paper like this, it will peek out. You can trim that if you, if you like, the painstaking trim maneuver. Yes, um, I, I'm choosing the ink cover-up maneuver. Yes. And that pretty much finishes that construct. So let's go ahead and decorate this little guy. And how did we decorate this one? Let's say it was very simple. Um, apparently, I used some Nouveau drops. That's in Copper Penny. Mm-hmm. That's what she did. She came along with the Copper Penny. Nouveau drops, crystal, Nouveau crystal drops in Copper Penny. Okay. This bottle will last you forever, by the way. Um, and I used a little trim. So I had a little trim. Will this trim mark? Maybe it will. 
Um, yeah, maybe I'll put it about halfway down so I can still see some of the browning um, there. And actually what I might do, just to emphasize it, a smidgeroo more. Take my little uh, dauber and I'm going to come along with my, my swirling, was this Polynesian maneuver? Yeah, I think so. Darkening it up a little bit, maybe a little extra dark around the edges where people would grab it with their hands. Okay, and that's going to give something for this white trim to pop on. Yeah, I can do it at the top. I can leave a little border. I can put it in the center. Could even put it at the bottom. But I think I'm going to put it just a hair down from the top so they can see the crisp edge. The crisp edge of the pocket that they didn't know was there until they, I put something in it or they'll put something in it. Okay, not mandatory, but it's just leveling it up just a smidge, just for fun. A little extra. So it didn't really take any more effort. There were no more cuts, which was nice but you end up with a little pocket in addition. All right. I think I'm hopefully getting, I can hear your brains turning where you're like, oh yeah, and if you did this and if you did that, and exactly. And show me what you're thinking in the Facebook group. Show some pictures of like, yeah, I did that and then I did this. Look at this. Yep, you can totally do that. Um, and uh, share your ideas because we all get inspired from each other. Okay, uh, so we have that. So now let's um, do this with the, I'm going to, I'm going to decorate it first. Let's do that. No. Yes. I'm going to fill it. That's what I'm trying to say. Maybe you've got some old ledger that you want to put. Maybe it's a, a crumbly piece of old ledger. So you don't, and you have something on both sides. So you want to be able to honor both sides, but by not gluing it down, but this is a great way to house it. So somebody else can come along and appreciate it. So there, now you've gone ahead and you've done that because you're amazing. And then maybe you wanted to put in a, an old library catalog card. Cause that looks kind of cool. And then um, did this don't get all glued together on me here. Okay, m make sure that you didn't accidentally glue the wrong space in your pocket. Because that happens sometimes. Go in there and check. Check with something thin so you can define your pocket. Now I'm defining my pockets, very easy access. And uh, you could just tuck fun things in there. Okay, I found some just little fun things. Here's a um, uh, Hillsborough County Day Pass. Uh, maybe that's a little bit. Oh, that's pretty. Maybe I'll put that inside. Oh, no, I don't know where to put it. Maybe I'll put it, just put it there. I could put it there, totally. But you know what? Let's not put anything there. Let's just finish the decoration first. So, um, with the Nouveau Drops, I came down here and down here and then across here. And you could put these anywhere you like, but that's just a simple way to decorate this one. Okay, I'm just down up, down up, down up, down up, down up. And this gives you a, a riveted look very easily, very effortlessly. Um, sometimes you'll get a polywog tail that hangs off the side if you pull to the side. So if you go down up, there's less chance of that. Okay. And I guess I went, I went straight down the thing because the other one I must have decorated when I already had stuff in it. But if you haven't fully, I mean, stuffed it yet, I guess in the little pockets in front, you can, you can do some more decorating on the, the front, but just make sure you wait till this stuff is dry. Okay. And then I came along and I did this. I guess I could do a more contrasting one, but you know, we're using what we got right in front of us here. So there we go. But that just gives it some pretty riveted looks, more definition to what we were doing. And then maybe you just want to tuck, I'm just going to grab some smaller things. I have some little <laughs> tickets here that should not uh, interfere with the things that I have tucked in there. So little bits of old tickets. Okay. Maybe this, you're too wide. We won't do you. Maybe you, you're a good contrasting color. This is an old um, Russian bus ticket. So just fun things. I mean, you can just come along here and just tuck little interesting things in, you know, that one won't fit. Okay. But I think you get the idea. And there you go. So, um, let me clear the decks and we'll put down what we made. And um, I think Sunshine might have something to share. Do you have something to share, Sunshine? Yes, yes I do. And I'm right here and I'm ready. Okay, just give your mother a second. She's just uh, putting down what we made. All right, I'll wait patiently. You take your time, Mom. Don't, don't rush on my account. No, none of that. All right, here's that guy. Here's this guy. Still right here, Mom, haven't moved. Nothing going on down here. No, nope, nothing. Okay, so those are the things that we made. And let me grab a little sun bun. Still right here, Mom. Over here, a little bit to the left. Um, don't put it on the wet one, Mom. Not on the wet one. Okay. Um, okay, come on up. Uh, okay, I'm coming. 
All right. Yes. Okay. So you you have you really you really do have something to tell them? Yes. Yes, I do. It's very important. Hello, everybody. It's Sunshine here, and I would like to report an official pup date that there are certain snuggle positions when you are a pup that are choice. Yes. Okay, so there's mom laying on the couch watching Netflix, all right? And uh, so I try a few different maneuvers. First is the attack mom until she gives up all treats, and that usually works. Okay, so then when my belly is full, I come in for a snuggle, and I come in, and I like to curl up in mom's C. Yeah, I call it a C. It's like a warm spot. You know, she... She just makes this like C shape with her body and I kind of curl into that little C and it's very warm and nice and snuggly. Except sometimes, I think she has a hot flash and it gets really hot and then I have to leave. <laughs> and then I go over and I sit on something else. And then after a while, I'll come back and I'll snuggle back into the C. And this goes on through all those episodes of Netflix. I know, I know. Does anybody else do that? Um, Fido, Max, Ronnie next door, do you do that? Um, somebody let us know. All right, so that, that's a very good um, uh, uh, poll. We're taking a poll, yes. How is, where is the snuggle position, right? Yeah, there we go. I'm, I'm fascinating. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's it, right. It's an absolutely fascinating concept. Okay, we will see what folks say. All right, thanks everybody. Happy crafting, love ya, bye. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Twitterbottom. He has 101 different names. So yeah, if you've got book pages hanging around, have some fun with it. And if you are new, welcome. If you have been here, thank you for coming back and hanging out and spending your precious time uh, crafting and um, hopefully having some fun. Um, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. If you don't know, I have a free monthly email newsletter where you will get a free digital image emailed to you every month. Um, a checklist of supplies to make junk journals, a note from the bookmaker, which is something fun that I uh, just wrote out. Um, you can change the words, change the font, restylize it, make it your own, or use it exactly as is with my blessings. Um, I tuck these into the beginning of a junk journal to help folks understand what a junk journal is and how to use it. Kind of get their little imagination wheels turning. Um, I have an Etsy shop where you can find vintage digi kits, which are computer files themed birds, Victorian, butterflies, dragonflies, tea time, sewing, baking, you name it. There's over 170 right now. They all have five pages each of uh, uh, themed uh, pictures that you can cut out and use for pockets or tuckers or whatever you like in your junk journals. They're a lot of fun. And also, if you don't like to, uh, if you don't have a printer or you don't like to print, I have a print and mail option for you where I will print out 10 digikits and mail them to you for one flat fee. Ship Priority shipping is included. And all I need from you is the list of 10 digikit names. You only need to give me the first two or three words and you can send me that list, list either in Etsy message or through um, email to pam at thepaperoutpost.com. Both are fine. Both will work. And um, I have an Amazon shop if you're looking for favorite tools and supplies or things that you see me use here, gelatos, something like that. Um, I try and put links to um, everything that I can find into my Etsy shop, or Etsy shop, into my Amazon shop. And I also have uh, a merchandise shop. If uh, you like the phrase create with reckless abandon or everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise, hey, we, I can put that for you um, or the company can put that for you on a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, a zip hoodie, um, a mug, a toad, a water bottle, and they make great gifts for you, friends, family, any crafter that you know and love. There you go. And um, I have a podcast which comes out new audio material every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, you, anywhere you normally listen to your podcasts, there's also a link down below. If you don't have a special place to listen to your podcast, you don't need one. Uh, you can just listen to it on the internet. Um, and also, um, I do video podcasts every other day of the week, and those will upload to be viewable on Spotify, or you can just listen to the audio from those, uh, which is, um, uh, you can list it, listen on any platform. Um, you can find me on Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. I have a Facebook group I mentioned. Come on over. We're having a lot of fun doing weekly, monthly challenges as well as seeing what you guys make from these videos. Um, feel free to make it exactly it is, as is. Feel free to put your own twist on it and show us what you did and took it to the next level. That's awesome. 
Um, and it doesn't have to be wonderful or perfect or amazing or you don't have to be a very seasoned artist. You, and beginners are welcome to post their items too because it's fun, it's uh, welcoming, everybody is very um, supportive and it's a great place to um, share what you've made. And then most of all, remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. And uh, maybe use up some book pages. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.